Welcome to the Pixel Noise Music Series. I'm Jay Kenny, your host for the Technical Series. Today's lesson will focus on home studio techniques using mid-side stereo miking. At the end of this lesson, you will understand how this technique is accomplished, its advantages and applications, some of the history and the theory behind the technique, the equipment you will need, how to set up your analog or digital console or your digital audio workstation, and how some microphone preamps come with built-in mid-side decoders. Now mid-side, or MS, is a stereo miking technique. In the field, it's used for broadcast and film because it's 100% mono-compatible. In the studio, it's used because of the natural stereo sound field it creates. It's also popular because of the many options you get during the mixdown process. Mid-side is considered a coincident miking technique because the microphones are placed as closely together as possible. And it's differences in loudness between the left and right channels that create the stereo image not time delays, which is how other stereo miking techniques work. The mid-side stereo technique uses a mid-mic, which is usually directional, but can be omnidirectional. This mic is aimed at the source, while a bi-directional side mic is positioned to pick up sound coming from the sides. The signals must be properly decoded to create the final stereo image. The theory for this technique was patented by Alan Blumline in 1934, but it didn't come into widespread use until the work of Danish radio engineer Holger Lauridsen in the 1950s. Using this method has three main advantages. The first is that the resulting stereo image is 100% mono-compatible. That's because the signal from the side microphone is split into two pathways, which are put 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Then they're panned hard left and hard right. When these two signals are combined in a mono mix, they cancel each other out completely, leaving only the sound of the middle microphone. The second main advantage is that you have a lot more flexibility in the width and depth of the stereo image during mixdown much more so than you do with other types of stereo miking, such as XY, ORTF, or spaced pairs. The third advantage is that you don't have to have a matched pair of microphones in order to do this. It is required, however, that at least one of the microphones have a figure eight, or bi-directional polar pattern. The mid-side technique has a wide variety of applications. In the field, it could be used for live concert sound recording, audio for broadcast, ambient and natural sound recordings, or location recordings, such as a choir in a church. In the studio, it can be used for anything where you want to get a nice stereo field. This could include acoustic guitar, drum overheads, acoustic piano, or small vocal or instrumental ensembles. In order to try this, you will need two microphones. The mid microphone is usually directional. A cardioid pattern is most often used. But you can try super or hypercardioid or omnidirectional. Feel free to experiment with different polar patterns and distance from your source to get interesting results. Now the second microphone must be figure eight or bi-directional. 
Ribbon microphones are a good choice for a side microphone because they're almost always bi-directional. In addition to the mics, you're going to need one of the following. A digital audio workstation, an analog or digital mixer with phase reverse switches on it, or a dedicated mic preamp that has an MS decoder built in. Now if your mixer doesn't have phase reverse switches on it, you can build a phase reverse cable by swapping pins 2 and 3 on one end of your XLR cable. Now don't get this cable mixed up with others because you don't want to use it by mistake. In this demonstration, I will set up the mid-side configuration on an acoustic piano. Notice that the side microphone is in a figure eight polar pattern. The two lobes of the side microphone should be facing to either side of the sound source with what is normally the front side of the microphone facing to the right. The middle microphone is usually going to be in a cardioid pickup pattern. Place the middle microphone so that it is facing directly at your sound source. You will want to try and get the two capsules of the microphone as close together as possible, but without actually letting the microphones touch. In this example, we're going to use our digital audio workstation and our digital audio workstation's mixer to create a mid-side decoder. You'll see here that I have two tracks recorded. One's my mid-microphone and the other track is a side microphone. I've set up three tracks in my mixer and each of those tracks are stereo tracks which are bussed to a stereo output. Now in order to make this work, we have to create a copy of our side microphone. So we'll go up and grab the copy tool and create a new track. And then we have to make this track out of phase with the original. In this particular program, we have a phase reverse tool. So I'll just select that and click here. In some programs, you'll have a phase reverse switch on your mixer's channel strip. The next thing we need to do is pan these two tracks out, hard left and hard right. And it's also a good idea to make sure that these two tracks are linked together so that volume changes are the same on both sides. Now let's go ahead and start playback. And you'll notice as I bring up the two side microphones, the stereo image will come into focus. The image will get narrower as I turn the side microphones down and will get wider as I bring the side microphones up beyond the level of the mid microphone. As an interesting experiment, let's bring the two side mo microphones back into their center position so they cancel each other out completely, leaving only the middle microphone. Let's pull them back out in stereo and listen to that stereo image again. In this example, we're going to use our digital audio workstation's mid-side decoder plug-in to create our stereo image. You can see I have the same two tracks. I've got my guitar mid microphone and my guitar side microphone feeding into a stereo channel on my digital audio workstation's mixer with the MS decoder plugin inserted into that channel strip. Let's open up the decoder and take a look at the options that we have. I'm going to begin the playback of the track. And the first control we're going to play with is the width control. This allows us to make the image more narrow or wider. And if we pull it all the way down, 
we get a mono signal with just the middle microphone. Let's put it back up a little ways and listen to these controls here, which work on the asymmetry and rotation. These two controls work together to kind of shift where the stereo image is sitting. We'll set these back to defaults. And go over here and turn on our bass shelving EQ. With this on, I can choose a frequency point where I want to boost or cut either the middle microphone. You can hear it getting a little thinner there. Or the side microphone. Let's turn that EQ off. And now these controls here allow us to switch the inputs in case we mixed up our mid and side mic. We can turn off the middle mic, hearing just the side, or vice versa. We can turn the whole decoder on and off. And we can also swap the outputs in case we had our side mic pointed the wrong way. So we've got quite a few options to explore in this nice little plugin. In this example, I'll be showing you how to use your digital mixer to set up a mid side decoder. To do this, you're going to need three channels. The first channel is going to be for the mid microphone. The other two channels, which are going to be set up as a stereo pair, are going to return the signal from the side microphone. So to begin, we're going to route the output of the mid microphone into our first channel's input. On this mixer, I select the channel, go to the input section, and assign the output of my digital audio recorder into that channel. For the side microphone, we're going to route its output from the digital audio recorder into both of these channels. Let's go to our mixer's input page and route that output into both of these channels. Now these two channels should be stereo linked so that when you raise the faders, the output of those channels will be mixed into the decoder equally. Let's go and put those into stereo link mode. And notice that when I raise one of the faders, the other one follows right along with it. You're also going to want to pan these two channels out, hard left and hard right, and make sure that the second channel is 180 degrees out of phase. Now let's listen as I begin playback, and I start to slowly raise up the level of the middle microphone. So, as we bring this up, we're going to hear just the mono signal coming from the mid microphone. Now, notice that this channel is panned to center. As we bring up the side microphones, you're going to start to hear a nice stereo image. We can control the width of the stereo image by taking the output level of these channels and bringing them down or back up to your taste. The more side microphones you have in the mix, the wider the image is going to be. If you want to narrow it, you simply turn the side microphones down. If they're turned down all the way, you'll just get the mono signal of the middle microphone. You'll also notice that if you bring the panning of your side channels to center, there's the left channel. Now let's go over and do the right channel. Now they're going to cancel each other out and you're only going to hear the middle microphone. I can verify that by cutting or muting the mid microphone and you'll hear that the side microphones are gone. If I pan these back out to stereo, you're hearing the image of just the side microphones. Let's bring the mid back into the picture for the whole stereo image. <laughs> 